Hello everyone, Dr. Beard here. I hope you had a wonderful week and a fantastic weekend. And even more, I hope you've had a wonderful semester. We've been on quite the journey this semester. And I thought it might be nice just to recap this journey that we've been on. You know, we started thinking about leading self. And I believe it's so important when we talk about leadership that we start with self-development. So as we look at the modules that we've been through, we started this semester with understanding and developing your personal why, and then starting on that journey of self-discovery. And I believe it's important that when we talk about leading self, it starts with self-discovery. Then it moves to self-awareness, self-development, and then self-regulation. So what does all that mean? Self-discovery, we start with assessments, and that can be a myriad of options. We can look at temperament and personality assessments, leadership assessments, and I think it's important for leaders to continuously do these assessments throughout their careers and throughout their lives. And we learn from those assessments, and we're able to identify where we need to grow. And then the self-development part, we begin to work on those areas that we need to grow in and further develop areas that we have strengths in. We should not negate that continuous improvement mindset, even in areas that we may do well. And from that, we eventually achieve self-regulation, and that's when we can develop ourselves to the point that we have the ability to be intentional about our actions rather than just responding to situations. So it moves from a selfish to a selfless. I refer to that as the maturity continuum. It moves from being you-centered and you-focused to others-focused. So once we discover ourselves, we have the ability to lead ourselves and then lead others. So that was all part of that leadership self-discovery. And then we looked at some core areas of leadership that helped us by looking at a transformational leader in technology that you identified and you were able to meet with them and learn from them and, and you guys had some great takeaways from that. Then you started setting goals that you revisited later after you explored effective communication. Effective communication being a transfer of understanding, not just sending out information, but ensuring that the message you intend is the one that is received. And as we looked at educational technology foundations and basic concepts, you researched a school or school district and you learn about that school district. You started thinking about some of the administrative applications, especially thinking about instrumental versus missional thinking. So are we just doing technology for the sake of technology or thinking about the overall learning outcome. And of course we, should use data-driven decision-making as a way to drive us towards the right decisions. But then we also have to leverage that experiential knowledge and wisdom. So as we think about integrating technology, we again thought about making sure that we have that learning technology initiative planned appropriately. And then we looked at the internet, thinking about now how there's even more of an awareness about the need to have solid virtual options. It may not be the only way we do it, but it should be a potential option. And we found during this COVID pandemic time how that might be forced upon us, but we need to have that as an option so that it is uh, out there when needed. And you guys examined how to evaluate hardware and software options so that you could make the right recommendation. Then we went back and we said, hey, let's complete this leadership development plan. And you guys did a fantastic job. I was really inspired by the depth that you guys uh, approached that with. And I hope you leave this course with some solid thinking that you can continue to develop. And then with that, we looked at creating a policy brief, went back and revisited some of those uh, current policies and procedures that are in some of the schools and school districts that you examined and how can we now leverage our leadership and influence to be able to lead towards a better outcome. And so now we get to module 14 
And as we put all that we've learned together, you may be informing a direction and need to look at how the financial part works. How can you obtain the finances needed to implement one of those technology initiatives that you looked at? So again, you guys have done really well this semester. I really do appreciate all of your hard work. The quality of your posts and the assignments that you completed, the reflections really uh, solidified my thinking that you have really grown. And so I hope you realize that. And I tried to structure this course in a way to where the assignments provided you the opportunity to pursue areas of interest that you were passionate about. And I hope you realize that. And I know I've seen that from the work that you provided. But a critical part of the planning that we've been looking at involves securing resources. So that's the financial planning. And like planning in general, it's an ongoing activity and you need careful analysis. I love the, the quote uh, that says, you know, plans are useless, planning is everything. And the idea behind that is you can have great plans, but the planning part, you have learned contingencies and options where you're able to flex as needed. But when we put in these plans and we start down that road, we want to make sure we put something into place that is sustainable for the long term. So it's important for educational leaders because it encourages to think more comprehensively and strategically and not just focus in on a, on a smaller problem and realize how we need more than those immediate solutions and we need to, instead of a, having a narrow focus, really focus on sustainability and think about the broader context. So at the end of this module, we're going to look at these objectives. We're going to identify a pro problem of practice and hopefully it's one that you have some continuity to that you've already been working on that you can build upon. You're going to create a budget and then you're going to develop this plan through this lens of sustainability so that you've applied a comprehensive educational technology leadership, the knowledge you've gained over the course, and you've applied that to this problem. So working on this lecture. I'll get this posted soon. The readings this week are going to help you think more about uh, the funding sources, how we can stretch that technology dollar, and some grant options. And then I challenge you guys to continue to look for those options that are out there. There are some great options that are provided by various businesses. And what I have learned is many times there are grant and funding options that are never realized that are out there for the taking that are just not properly pursued. So answer these questions in the discussion should get you thinking about some common sources of funds and planning for the financial side and how you can go about that. So for this final project, I will be asking you to revisit the thinking and work that you've done over the semester but now under a new lens, the lens of sustainability. Sustainability is a term that's more often associated with business, technology, and international development, as well as the environmental movements that are out there. But for the interest of this course, we're thinking about education, technology, and leadership. And when we think about those areas, sustainability is, is very important and useful. So there's a case study that you can look at a little mini case study. I won't read it for the sake of time in this video, but it's a school concern about the sustainability efforts to increase literacy for high school students. So we could think about that from a more narrow focus, but we want to think about it from a broader focus and thinking about the external resources that might help us with that. So I want you to look at that. And when we think about the importance of sustainability, we're thinking about as educational leaders, it forces us to think more comprehensively and strategically about how we can take narrow problems and immediate solutions and move it to a broader focus of sustainability that will help us think about it in a broader context. So when we think about this final project, you're going to be responsible for creating 
a project that addresses a significant problem of practice in your school or institution. So draw on the work for module seven and nine, which you identified problems of practice and identified a solution that will include technology. So this is gonna help you take that work further into a long-term sustainable initiative. And there's four components of this final project. And my goal is that this would be something that you could easily repurpose into an external grant application at some point. So as you've done with recent assignments, you can create this in a Word doc or a Google doc. And there are four parts that I want you to pay attention to. So part one, the problem of practice and the technological solution. And this will include at least one paragraph that you will explain the, the problem and the solution. And then part two, the resources. And you will identify and briefly describe two to three sentences with at least five internal resources and five external resources. Part three, you'll work on the budget. And there's a resource you can use to guide you or something like that, but it should be less than a page. And you can use it in like a spreadsheet or table. And then part four, the sustainability statement. So uh, tie together the work that, that you do in an organized mission statement about how your efforts will continue in the foreseeable future. And then you'll see the other sub points that you can use to guide you. Should be about 500 words. So to summarize it, one paragraph problem of practice, one paragraph for the technological solution, list and describe five internal and five external resources, a one page budget, and a 500 word sustainability statement. And there's some great examples that you can draw from from prior students that uh, can guide you. This, this assignment's worth 200 points. So it is worth more, it's gonna require more. So take some time but you can see how this will be graded, the completeness, the creativity, the connection with course content, and then writing. So make sure you produce something that's of quality and graduate level work, and then you can submit the Word document, or again, if you submit Google Docs, just make sure that it's set to public so that I can view it. And then this last review and reflect. So I do want you to go ahead and post a a post like you have that reflects on this week's content but then I also want you to create a final post and for this final post I just want you to look back over all your posts and reflect back over the semester and and what's your final biggest takeaway from this course and finally looking back what did you learn about yourself and others we've covered quite a lot this semester you've been on quite the journey You've done very well. I've been very impressed with your work. Hopefully it will inform your practice and challenge you to be that lifelong learner and continuing to grow and be the educational leaders that I know you can be.